It's one player, two player. Put controller in, and they turn the power button on. And hey, power on! Like just like a all like full arm extension. Goodbye. Goodbye, my love. Yeah. And Potter, I will never love his, again. His whole purpose in this. Oh, I, I just realized. His whole purpose in this is. like overarching narrative is to drop an amulet in a hole. Yeah. That's all, like, that's ultimately all he amounts to. They disrespected him so fucking hard. We need justice from a boy, Connor. Give him one more game. Give him two more games. Give him a trilogy. Yeah. Give, give him the SEO treatment. Oof. Why is there blood on your hand? What? He's been in there for like 200 years. I guess this is it. We're right behind you. Damn, that's a very freshly preserved corpse. <laughs> Glory lady, I'm coming! I'm coming, girl lady! <laughs> I'm so excited! I'm coming. Also, I'm approaching the gate! Oh, and she's over here, what? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh great, you're going, what? Hold on a minute. You ready, daddy? Stop. Why? <laughs> yeah, why? I do it because I I I'm, uh, I'm put the thing in the hole. Don't worry, Daddy. I'm gonna put this thing in a hole in your hole. What? No. I mean, I mean, in the in the hole in the hole in the hole. <laughs> put it in, in, in Veronica's hole. What? Yeah, yeah. Totally saved it. Saved it. Totally, totally saved it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It saved it. Yeah. Damn, it's going real bright. I'm gonna look right at it. Guys, I can't see anything. <laughs> I'm going blind. <laughs> it turns out more light makes you more blind. <laughs> I've been lied to. Yeah. Guys, where'd he go? Guys, you can't just turn off the lights on me. <laughs> Guys, where'd the, where'd the camera go? Guys? Turns out more light Wait, actually makes it worse. <laughs> he, he starts running slower and slower. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Here, at last, you know our story now. Glowy lady of with the glitchy boobs. Of how we failed, all our hopes extinguished. Save one. Your touch, a spark. You want my touch? A spark to save the world. Wait. Who the fuck are you? Touch the pedestal. Minerva. I'm not a pedestal. What? I'm not a pedestal. But how? You left. I mean, I did touch a 200-year-old dead kid earlier, but that, that's beside the point. There was only one. What the hell is going on here? You must not go. Glory, ladies. Free her. Juno dwells within these walls, awaiting release. I will explain. While we worked to save the world, she sought instead to conquer it. She used our machine to set her plans in motion. What? Divination through numbers. There I don't know what that means. To, existence. to comprehend oh. the calculations is to tame time. This was my mm. focus. And so I built the eye to aid us. I got she I. She turned it towards her own end. When we discovered her treachery, we put a stop to it. And then we left. But first we called to you that you might try again. We thought it would be safe with her gone. Now I see we were deceived. She survived. She endured. And then no, she, she in cave. Work. For centuries, Tinya and I walked the world, hoping to rekindle the spark of civilization. We shared what we knew as best we could. We were not the only ones. But for all the power we wrought, still death would claim us. But before it did, I would have one last... Can you wrap it up? I'm, I'm, losing, it I'm losing my attention span real fast. <laughs> I had hoped you might find this. Look, I mean, you know, I'm not Desmond Miles, I'm Desmond Kilometers. I got a lot shorter span. You and the Templars have squabbled over our refuse. You have wasted centuries. And so you have lost your chance. You cannot hope to stop the end now, Desmond. Only to survive. She's lying! Only touch the pedestal and the world will be saved. Better the mm. world burn than she be loosed upon it. Is that so? Show Ooh, can't one. fight. But he will not understand. 
It is complicated. It is. Show me. <laughs> this is Show fucking me. really good. I love this scene, dude. Oh no, I mean, I wanted you to take your top off. The ground will crack and spit fire into the sky. All the world will burn. Damn. There's volcanoes everywhere. Guys, it's, it's the sun's bright. I didn't I, I didn't think you knew. You I gotta cover your eyes. Resolving to lay a foundation that such a tragedy does not befall the world again. You will become a symbol to those who survive. Hope, knowledge, determination. You will inspire them to rebuild, to thrive once more. And as the world heals, Why am I dressed like Moses? So too will humanity. But you are just a man. Frail and mortal. You pass from the world, leaving behind only a memory. A legacy. You will be remembered first as a hero, later as a legend, and in time as a god. It is the cruelest fate to have written words that meant well and see them made wicked and unwise. What was meant to encourage life, used instead to justify taking it. And so now you see that what was shall be again. So tell me, how is this better? So that's what he does if he puts his hands on the pedestal? No, if he decides or... not to. She would sacrifice you, sacrifice the world, for no other reason than to deny me vindication. They will enslave your kind, Desmond. Is this not why you wanted? Is this not why you came here? To ensure more than just your race's future. I, I came here for other reasons. What future? What freedom? Billions dead and the whole cycle begun anew? This world has known nothing but heartache and horror since we left it. Our gift to them. And you will see it all return. Enough! You must not do it. Sorry, I just had Whatever to say that. Juno's planning, however terrible it might seem today, we'll find a way to stop it. But the alternative, what you want, there's no hope there. If you free her, you'll be destroyed. It will happen in an instant. There will be no pain. You mustn't. It's done, Minerva. The decision's made. Then the consequences of this mistake are yours to live and to die with. You need to go. All of you. Now. Get as far away from here as you can. Come with us. We'll find another way. No, Daddy. There I stay time. here. <laughs> Son. Daddy. <laughs> so go. Go. I can handle this all on my own. I'm a big boy. I can play big balls. I got this. What's your choice? Oh, I don't pick. Oh, you don't? No. Oh, why did I remember like you there actually being a choice? And she fucking lied. That took a while. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be done in this end. Aurora Borealis. Never seen anything like this before. Eyewitnesses describe I'm across the world. <laughs> hey, we get it. Mastered. So here's the deal. In Valhalla, um, it's shown that when he put his hand on there, he got put into the same thing that the others got put into so he's like he's like, oh, like trapped Juno Minerva? yeah so he's he's trapped in it so but the thing oh. is is he doesn't have his personality and everything attached to it anymore well i think actually he does initially but like he's been there for so long and he's been like running simulations to try to find a solution to the end of the world for so long that he's lost his personality mm. and uh it's it's wildly good like the story is phenomenal and that happens in valhalla oh Oh. You played your part well, Desmond. But now, now it's time that I played mine. 
Played your what? What? No, that's it. So wait. So wait, what the fuck does she mean by that? So she shows up. That? She shows up in Black Flag, Rogue, and Unity, and she's the overarching villain for like the the whole series now. Mm. So, wait. So her thing. If I remember right. I, I thought I understood it that these were like basically old recordings. Basically, like they. Like they oh were no, able no, to see yeah. Forward. She's solidly like AI. Okay. But I also gotta say, like, imagine how fucking wild it has to be to be talking to somebody, like, like for uh, Connor to encounter someone like Juno, and then to be talking to her and her saying these things you don't understand, and her be able to say, like, look, I'm not talking to you. Like, imagine how, from his perspective, how fucking wild that is. It's fucking insane. I'm very looking forward to uh, Shadow. It's gonna be fucking, it's gonna be great. I'm looking at shadows. Like I, it's either gonna be legendary or a, gi a gigantic colossal failure again, like a uh, Unity. But I, 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 I played Mirage. I see promise. I think they, they, mm. I, I really, really hope that they, they do it right. They do justice. Which one was Mirage? Mirage was the standalone prequel to Valhalla. Oh, interesting. To Wasn't the there a brief Assassin's Creed that was based in like uh like a sub like in Louisiana in like uh, the eighteen hundreds? Yeah, that's that's the uh that's the it's it's attached to this remastered game I got. It it comes it's the it's the PSP exclusive that after the PSP's colossal failure of a launch, uh was released on everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, alright, we're gonna put it only here. Fuck. Okay, put it everywhere else. All right, that that didn't go as planned. We're gonna re-release it, but increase the graphics. And nothing can go wrong. Oh no, it all went wrong. Yeah, so uh, well, I'll probably play that at some point, maybe with you. Uh, yeah, I gotta give it. Fun game. Like, I think the thing that I liked the most out of that game was the ability that you could swap between the dress and the hood, and you had different like ability, like different. Oh, did you, you did you play it? Do. Yeah. Oh. Huh. That yeah, that shit bugged the shit out of me. The changing outfits. I actually really enjoyed it. Like, it I would have, I would have liked it more if it had been more intuitive. I could get behind that because I liked like, the game mechanic that you had to, like, itself. Go to the house and do it. Like you had to go to the house and do it, and then you had to go to your location. Like you had to go yeah, so far out. Of exactly, the way. exactly. You had to stop everything you were doing to go switch it out. Like if it was a thing where, like you know, like. Uh, if you were to get into like a hiding place, you could change like you could put tuck your hood back or like and let your dress out or something. Then like that would be cool. Yeah. Like you could change inside the hiding places, like kind of like a Clark Kent type thing, right? Yeah, it would have been nice. That would have been way more but, intuitive. No. Yeah, but uh, but one thing that I really love is okay. I love when games start touching on... So I don't know if this is just the fact that I grew up in East Texas and that I, I was near a lot of Cajun culture growing up, but I love when people do, like, touch on, like, New Orleans, like, swamp voodoo type stuff. Oh, yeah, it's like, fun. I yeah. love it to death because voodoo is something that's, like, so, like... It's so creepy and like and cool at the same time. It's like God, I want to stay so far away from it, but my God, it's so cool. Yeah, you know? like it's so foreign to every like to like every other type of magic that you see out there, or like or like a uh, like like or like quote magic, right? Yeah. Like you have like a what is it? Like you have like a lot of, like some of the Native American stuff, which is more mythology. Then you got stuff like way out east that like just just like it's its own fucking thing but then you got like voodoo and hoodoo where it's like i'm gonna just actively slaughter a chicken take its head put it on a pike and i'm gonna be like i'm named my son joseph and i get money <laughs> it's like how does the fuck does that work and also just the, like i i want to see a like a more like a mod so if they do a world war ii assassin's creed yeah and they start going more into like the 20th century i want it so they, bad they need to start not with World War II, but the Roaring Twenties. Uh, they need to start with the. They need to. They need to do a trilogy, quite frankly, where the like first the two games. And... 
the first two games the are are the same people. Because I believe when was World War One? World War One was 1914 to 1917. Yeah, so you do the the two you do two oh, games we 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 play two of the same people, right? And you do the first assassin that is 17, and that's mm-hmm. that's during World War One. And then you do think, like, the Roaring Twenties, where he's like 20 years old, right? And then when he's like, 40, I, World War II starts. I think what you could do is like something kind of like how they did. Uh, not they really exactly did just. They, they really, they, did they really did just have both those wars back to back, didn't they? Yeah, it, it's wild that like they. So the, like the most tragic thing in my mind in all of human history is the fact that. World War One happened, and they called it the Great War, the war to end all wars. It was the most vicious thing that the world had ever seen at that mm-hmm. point, and they were so confident that it was going to bring peace. And then, not even thirty years later, world they war lived II. to see another one. Yeah, that's why I think what but, you what you should do you could literally do a single character that that spans that whole thing and does the Roaring Twenties, and in the Roaring Twenties, you have him go against the mob. Oh, say that again. So, so in the Roaring Twenties, you could have him go against the mob. Mm. I'm thinking what you could do is like have it be a case where oh, but, well, I, so I agree with you, but I think the way of portraying it is that you have it be a case where oh, could, oh, dude, could you imagine doing them doing like an L.A. Noir type Assassin's Creed, like really leaning to like the twenties detective type thing. Uh, and have it be a case where, like, instead of, like, doing, like, the L.A. Noir, like, actual L.A. Noir, like, uh, just, like, going through, like, a town in the United States and just solving crimes, like, not that. But instead, it's, like, the, the like, the looking for clues type thing, like, they bring in that mechanic. And basically, it's, like, and he was a, so he was a veteran of, of World War One, And we, yeah. and we experienced, well, we experienced World War One not, like, chronologically, but as, like, flashbacks for him. Like, like a darker, grittier Assassin's Creed, like less like. Um... So what you could do is for the first game, you could do World War One, but towards the end of it, and then during the second game, you could do flashbacks to the beginning of World War One because he was there for the whole thing. Mm. And then World War Two. I'm thinking, as much as I would love to see, I oh ooh okay here we go because World War Two. They would have to do it in a very unique way. Otherwise, it would end up like every other World War II game ever. The way I would do it, quite frankly, you're going to like this, is you would start it out with killing three targets, the third one being Hitler. And then after you kill Hitler, you learn that although he was the head of the Templar Order in that section of Germany, there's another set of Templars that were aiming to take over his Templar Order and your killing him just gave them the floor. Like, they just got full control. And so you end up so having to... doing it... It's like you cut off the Hydra's head, but you got two more. Yeah, so now now you have to go kill the rest of them, and it's another eight members, and then the real game that. starts after that. What I was thinking was, so... I guess I should be more clear. Uh, so, in regard... Because you have to... Like, if you're, if you're playing as, like, as some sort of American... Like, if you're covering World War II in Europe, you have to cover D-Day. Like, there's no yeah. way that you covered D-Day. But you can't do it from the American side because then you end up in the same situation and you basically end up kind of doing, like, basically all, like almost a Connor 2.0. Yeah. What if instead you find out about the D-Day plans and the German side and you sa- you and you, you have to go and hide as a German officer or a German soldier and sabotage the Germans from the back line to allow the the uh, allies to land because famously like actual world actual history the reason D-Day succeeded was because Hitler overslept literally he was so so I think have I told you this Yes. What I'm thinking is there's a, there's a window here that you could have the assassination of Hitler in his room, which results in him quote oversleeping. Ah, what if so? Like, what if it like at D Day is where you kill him, and they're trying to like cover, and basically from that point to Berlin, they're trying to keep the illusion that Hitler's still alive. Yeah, that would work. So like they could even have like like it uses body doubles as like for public appearances and they'd be like yeah no that's not actually him. But the thing is like the the uh, what would it be the OSS uh, the Office of Strategic Services I think is what it was called 
uh, the OSS would have to be like keep that from like the general troops and the general public because if if we let it out that we knew that Hitler was dead, then basically, like they would start like it would make things go from like like order like an orderly defeat like an orderly defeat to complete and utter chaos. Yeah, I think I think there's potential. Yeah, like you and I just described a perfectly like feasible World War Two Assassin's Creed game, and it would be beautiful. You know what? You could even do a thing where you so it's like so you start off in the United States and you could basically kind of go with the Americans all the way up to the Battle of Napoli, I think, or Sicily. Sorry, Sicily. So in southern Italy, where basically that's where like the, the tide kind of starts turning and we start realizing that we need to make a big move, and so D Day starts kind of getting theorized. And basically, that's when you go over and you go you do Germany. D Day happens. You kill Hitler, and what you realize is that you need it's like that the the Russians are going to be taking Berlin, and that's where like the like the apple of Eden or like the whatever is right. Mm -hmm. So effect. So basically, what happens is that you're trying to race the Russians to Berlin. They get there first, and then you have to chase them into Russia. This could totally so, be done. It's really frustrating yeah. too. Yeah, and like, it, like I think with, like with World War Two, if they're going to cover World War One or World War Two, they can't do anything that they've done in any other other games and like really settle on a single location. They need to make a like a like a bona fide uh, globe trotter Assassin's Creed. Well, no, like, they they could they could settle in it just being in Germany. That that could be a thing that happens because you would just focus on the the eight members. That are in Germany as the whole thing's like falling apart. True. But what I you would mean, have to do work. is you would have to have like old school Assassin's Creed two, like storyline for like the beginning of the game, like the intro, the prologue, where you kill three targets in a row, the third one being Hitler, and then you find out Ooh, oh, there's actually oh, a whole. Okay, so adding on to what you said earlier, so three games. So like you were saying, three games. I think the first. It's like I think. The first one and a half needs to be with a guy that's a World War One veteran happening in the 20s and 30s. And then the last half of three, or like in some way or another, and then the third, it's like, so the last half of three is them, is him, is basically it passing this torch down to his son, who takes it up and goes into, like, basically tries to finish up cleaning up the mob, and then he gets then he gets drafted or he goes and signs up for World War Two when that breaks out. And then that's how it goes forward. And basically everything is connected in some way. Well, I would rather it be just one character. It's one thing where I'm like... Because there were people that did World War One that did go into World War Two. True. They, they did, but you also have to remember that when... So when you're conscripted, you have to be 18. So that's being 18 in 1914. And then that's another... So here, we didn't get involved till 42. So that's 30 years later. So you'd be almost 50 years old. That'd be possible. I mean, yeah, it's possible, but it's one of those things where, like, I guess, okay, but I have to keep reminding myself that SEO was, like, almost 60. Yeah. 50 is so, yeah, well no, within the, the range of possibilities. Yeah, so I have to remember, I have to keep reminding myself, yeah, you know, it's absolutely possible. But I think there definitely needs to be, like, so I think they do need to, this is one of those creative choice things where they need to decide between have it being either one guy for both games or, in my mind, what is far more, like, impactful... Uh, is the father son thing because there is something like deeply uh, like to I, me. I think you could still have the son in the in the third game where like the reason why he goes to Germany to kill Hitler is because his son got drafted could be uh and then you could you could do that thing where like you actually have two playable characters throughout the whole game you know what? They could even have it be like the the combat thing is you playing as like kind of what they're doing with uh, Red, the kind of the direction they're going. Yeah, with with, with shadows. It's it's then... been named now. It's been named now. Shadows. Right. I forgot it was a project Red, and now it's shadows. Mm -hmm. So with shadows, you have the stealth character, and then you have like the samurai character, right? Yeah. So what with this, like you have the father who's like the stealthy detective type guy. It's like, and he's and that and actually that would make more sense like, why he doesn't want to fight up front in World War Two is because he's getting older. Yeah. His body's kind of like, it's like how Indiana Jones said, it's not the age, it's the mileage. Like, he has a lot of miles on him, he's wearing down, and so he has to naturally be stealthy, but he can still kick some ass. But the son is like, it's not a basic shooter, like, they would have to do something to spice it up. 
but it would base it would effectively be a shooter. Maybe, yeah. And, and I think the most difficult part of all of this is that so World War One is entirely feasible because melee weapons were still widely used because uh, machine or like factory produced weapons weren't as reliable as they it's like uh, like as they are now so you needed a melee weapon to back up when those failed but world war ii came around and weapons started becoming far more reliable so world war one is entirely feasible to keep like melee combat mechanics but with world war ii it's one of those things where you have to figure out a way to phase it out yeah I think that's, that's that's why I'm saying I think the 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 three character game when he gets older like like you were saying he would need to be stealthy because he's not he can't do the hand to hand combat because he's just older right. and the t and also the times have changed so it because... it would be it would be really really good yeah also I would love to see like there is so much stuff in the 20th century that I would love to see explored like uh, Korea the it's like the like Soviet bloc um mm. like imagine be like going through the soviet bloc as like a, as a russian assassin and you working your way up to stalin's office dude shadows is gonna be so fucking wickedly cool dude you have no idea like oh my god i'm so pumped Con sorry continue <laughs> <laughs> well like working your way up to stalin's office to find out that uh it's like they can even include a moment where so there's this moment where i don't think we know for sure if it happened but it's it was reported by one guy that Stalin, in, it's like a, the, basically to try and just demonstrate this principle to his officer. He he was talking. Is basically he took this pigeon and began violently ripping its feathers out, causing it to like to bleed and scream and all kinds of stuff. And he tossed it onto the ground and it started screaming and trying to go away from him. But what happened is they turned around, grabbed a bag of bread, it's like of like breadcrumbs, and started sprinkling them on the ground behind him. And the pigeon saw the breadcrumbs and started going after the bread behind him and following him everywhere. And he said, it doesn't matter how much you hurt them, as long as you give them bread, they will follow you to the ends of the earth. And so, you could be there for that moment, where it shows, like, who Stalin actually was, and see, like, the, it's like, and go, like, going through the gulags, and going through, like, the, it's like the, the KGB, it's like the KGB being developed, and like the the subversion like hell you could be like uh, like a, a double agent inside the kgb like acting like a kgb agent but you're for the assassins and then you have to fight the cia who turns out that they're actually the assassins and the kgb are the templars so you have to convince as a kgb agent you have to convince a cia agent as a kgb agent that you're not actually a kgb agent dude there could be that such an be awesome moment where they're like they're speaking in Russian, and he's like, "You need to prove to me that you're not a whatever." And he and he looks at him and he, and he goes, and, and he can literally say in Russian, "Everything, nothing is true. Everything is permitted." And 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 he would look at him and go, "Oh, <laughs> just oh." And then the, and yeah, then it would and that, that would by be that so good point, because like it could be one of those things where like with those first three games of like World War One, World War Two, like that time period, so like the ten, we'll say like the tens to the forties, that period, it could be like it needs to be like kind of really driven home that like the assassin and Templar orders are dwindling in their numbers and are dwindling in their strength and influence, but they're still prominent, but they're st like they're still prominent, they're still around, but they're not what they used to be. You know, so when the one in the Soviet bloc comes up, him saying that like nothing is, is true, everything is permitted, it makes so much more sense. Where it's like, oh, you're not. It's like you're not just KG. It's like you could be a temp. So I suppose of thinking like you're a Templar that knows our creed. Like maybe this, they think the assassins have completely died out, and so him saying the creed is saying like, oh, he knows. Like he knows something that no Templar should know. Yeah, they've started keeping it uh, a secret. Yeah. So like it's like they're it's like they're actual like hey I'm I'm one of you, and so like you can work with uh, like that would be so fucking cool working with like the old school CIA and FBI and all them and like going through like the subterfuge. And you gotta like, you gotta show that is, was J Edgar Hoover around for that? Um, because regardless yes. regardless of what game he shows up in, you gotta make him a dick. You gotta show that he was actually like an awful person. Oh yeah. Like you can't also this. You can't go so far as to make him a Templar, but you have to make him an absolute asshole. 
He can't be a Templar, but you can show that he was a total dick. Because he was. Like, he yeah, just was. Because there are plenty of assassins that have been dickheads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, that's one thing that I've loved about the Assassin's Creed franchise, is that it's never been assassins always good guys, Templars always bad guys. It's like... No, the Templars' goals have always been twisted, but they're in just like but their intent. But some yeah, of their that's intentions are like good. like you were saying. I think that's a perfect like, like the the, the best way to present that is uh, Assassin's Creed Civil War, like the Civil War game, where you've got Templars and assassins on both sides. Ooh, you brought you here. brought that idea up where it like. It would be awesome because then you get to see Templars who are actually genuinely good people and assassins who are absolutely awful human beings because they're both on separate sides and there's literally a civil war. Yeah. But, but see, you saying something remind, made me think of a, uh, something. Uh, I, but a cool period if they want to stay in like the, like the older, like the 19th century, the Napoleonic Wars. Mm, you could bring Arlo like, you... in for that. Yeah, like, could you, like, imagine if what happened is that when Napoleon was exiled, he didn't just die, like, he didn't just die out there, like, he actually was killed by an assassin. There's so much potential. Or you could, ooh, you know what, it's, you could actually play a lot with the, the Apples of Eden thing. Like, one thing I loved about Syndicate was the, was it like the, gold? it was the Golden Fleece, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, well, that was the thing that I love is that the Golden Fleece in a syndicate wasn't just like a random like oh it comes up like once and then it never happens again and it's just a basic combat thing it's like no it actually changed the entire way you had to fight him mm. and I, like that was something i absolutely loved and it's something that they need to incorporate a lot more of like that the like the uh the apples of eden or the uh like the the isu artifacts they need to actually come into play in the like the game mechanics. So like, what if there's a case where, like, what if Napoleon actually was killed like many times in combat, but he had some sort of Isu artifact that if he like if he died with it on him, like that was a thing that he was holding inside of his jacket, that if he died with it on him, it brought him back. So yeah. every time he failed, he just kept coming back, and that's how he kept learning. And that's why he was so good for his time period, is that he could fail in the military and still succeed. Dude, like, they, they, I, I, I'm really hoping they learned their lesson, because it looks like they did. And I'm hoping that they take all these, all this information we've just been providing in the very concept and just fucking run with it. Like, I am so Ubisoft, excited for Shadows. Do, like, I'll say this, Ubisoft, if you take, it's like, if you use any of these ideas, fucking go for it, I don't care, all I say is, like, put some sort of note to, like, the Cardinal channel on there. Oh, uh, 1P2P. Like, <laughs> or just, like, or, or 1P2P, 1P2P, Cardinal, wherever this is on, <laughs> uh, like, or wherever you first, wherever Ubisoft first sees it, like, just put, like, some little, like, like a bird somewhere, or, like, the 1P2P, like, two little, like, uh, smiley faces laughing somewhere, you know, so, so that we know. There's, it's so fucking, like, I, I cannot stress to you, like, Shadows had better be fucking good. <laughs> like, yeah, and I'll say this, I, like, I think we talked about this, not on, not on the channel, but, but just idly, we've talked about how, like, like, how it's, so, how it is super hard to fuck up a prequel, which is the reason why I think they've been going so far back. But they just keep kind of going further and further back in time. Yeah, because they're well, because they're doing the Germanic witch trials next. They're doing the what? The Germanic witch trials. A after shadows. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The project's that's... name is uh is Hex. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I... Yeah, they they announced their next three games. One of them is a mobile game that I'm not even the least bit fucking interested in. Oh, and it's, it's called oh. it's called Assassin's Creed Jade, and it looks like shit. Um, but then you've got Assassin's Creed Shadows, and then Assassin's Creed Hex, and I have never been more excited because the moment they announced Shadows, I was like, all right, all right, cool, 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 and then they announced um, Hex, and I was like, all right, Ubisoft, you have my attention. <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck it up 
and like, and it's so it's gonna be so cool. Down, like so much of like everything that's come out with Ubisoft. Like I even remember before Valhalla, like every like the Ubisoft at this point, it's never like it's a shame that with so many AAA developers, it's never become like it's rarely become a case of like I wouldn't say it's never a case, but rarely it's ever a case of like oh this is such a cool concept. I'm so excited for this game to come out, but now it's become a don't fuck it up. Yeah. I think I think the big thing is is like one of my games that I follow just did full release. It just came out, and it's called Dread Dread Delusion, and it is such a good game. And it it just dropped into 1.0. Can't stress this, people. Go fucking play it. It is so good. It's such a good game. I haven't had a chance to sit down and play all the other content, but dude, it is so good. Go buy it. Go play. It's like 20 bucks. They released the full version and they didn't up the price. It is so good. Go buy Damn. it. And then that's you have a, a that's a good dev. Those are some good devs. Yeah, and then you have you have Gloomwood, which is thief if it were Bloodborne, and it's like f- fucking what? yes, please. <laughs> like people, like I I would love to see like you, like these AAA companies have no idea how fast they would make money if they started like creating like like basically they created their own game jams. Like, I, like, they did they, that. Like, yeah, Ubisoft you did cre- that. Did you know that? They did that a while back, no. like, forever ago. Like, they haven't done it, like, since. But, like, that's where we got the game uh, Up. Grow Up. That's uh, where we got the game Grow Up. We got the, the little oh. robot that grows up. Like, gets, yeah, we got yeah. that from that. Like, uh, yeah, it's like, okay, it's like they need to start doing that a lot more because there are so many uh, great... If I, like, really quick, I mean, like, before, before I have, forget, because I want to... no idea how much money they would have made if for example they held a game jam and toby fox produced like presented like the prequel like oh the, pro, absolutely like, pro, like the of undertale they would have made so much money off of that like i i, I can't help i want to stress this really quick i do know of another game that came out of that game jam if i remember quickly and it was called child of light and that was also a really good metroidvania so go uh, check those uh, out that was they're what? really cool uh, uh, you cut off on my end a child of light it was a really good metroidvania oh like Metroidvanias are games that's like they're kind of like I don't know why they're looked down on by like the triple like by the triple A community or at least by the like triple A developers. Yeah, I've seen it's not necessarily the community; it's the companies. Yeah, like they just get looked down on. I'm like, no, Metroid Metroidvanias are great. I mean, Fucking look awesome. At Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight is amazingly popular. Yeah, we're waiting on Silk Song still. I I bought Hollow Knight. I plan on playing it and uh, beating it, but I also know that it's like really incredibly difficult. So. But like, yeah, like yeah it's it's so. G- oh, we're finally at the end of the credits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Woo, finally. Ugh, but yeah, like it's it's insane. This long. <laughs> okay, fucking like, can anybody listen? Has listened this long? Give yourself a solid pat on the back. <laughs> You've earned it. Yeah. Get yourself a solid pat up, pat on the back. Get yourself a beer and a donut, and uh, go take go, a to, nap. go the fuck to bed. <laughs> yeah, go the fuck to bed because I know I'm about to. It's a glowing circle. And so, uh, yeah. O- overall, uh, the message for this is, uh, we'll we're gonna go do. Uh... Oh, hold on. Oh. I forgot there was more. <gasps> Hickey. His name was Hickey. I forgot. See, I didn't want to be yeah. offended. I, was... I didn't want to be offended, offensive. So, <laughs> like, I avoided it. <laughs> uh, ooh, what's he find? Oh, he's just looking back on it. See here. Is he still Achilles, stabbed? Is, is Achilles dead at this point? No, I mean, I guess Achilles doesn't die in, until you finish the uh, the homestead missions. Oh. Uh, Which we're well, not I mean, gonna I guess do. If you get stabbed in the gut back then, it's gonna take you a long while to recover. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. I think Achilles pops up, doesn't he? No? Connor, you're burning my f- good frames. <laughs> oh, I guess not. Totally something he would say, though. Oh, I guess I get to go, uh... I gotta go oh. take the... Yeah, this. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite moments of the entire of the entire game. Or just, a, like... Of every game that I've played, this is probably one of my favorite moments. What if you fucking looked up his nose and he had a fucking booger in it? <laughs> oh, I must hold on, Boogie. Schnee, schnee. 
like for everything that it represents like knowing what's to come and what's not it's like and what won't work and also the coolest part about it that is a uh actual peace pipe so it was it's, it's a so it's a pipe axe that has the pipe built into it um and it was meant to be a it was meant it was meant uh i used i have one on my wall i'm trying to remember there was a guy that made it back i think it was like the 1760s or 1750s that made it as basically trying to be a symbol as a, as like as a symbol of peace between white settlers and the natives and the natives adopted it completely they were like oh that's fucking awesome you know and so it's this beautiful symbol that so many people misunderstand anyway point is uh go buy indie games always buy indie stick yes. with indie triple a is falling into the shitter indie's the place to buy go indie buy indiana jones yes that too buy the new indiana jones it actually wasn't that bad it's better than fucking crystal skull i'll tell you that much Crystal Skull is really good up until you get to the end when they pull out the fucking aliens and then don't do anything with them. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta go, hey, hit me with the aliens, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, power off, everybody.